Worry Hour. The National Life and Accident Insurance Company and its 3,500 shield men from coast to coast who believe that most of the things you worry about never happen bring you this new program called The Worry Hour featuring the music of Francis Craig and his orchestra, and in addition to the songs of Snooky Landman and Jane Grant, a gorgeous guest songstress, and a brand new star for radio fans to worry about. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, that expert on the cause of worry, Professor Fred. Here now, Professor Phineas Fret, if you please. A fine thing. Here I'm introduced for the first time on a new program, and you leave out half my name. What's the matter with you anyway? Well, I'm sorry, Professor Phineas Fret. We've all been so worried about this new show, The Worry Hour, that, well, I'm really not myself. Can't you tell? Uh, you are yourself, Professor. So suppose you go ahead and tell the folks about the program, eh? Well, my friends... It's simple. We have an idea that most of the things that worry people never happen. And yet we realize that a lot of people just can't be happy without doing a pile of worrying. We believe that if they just set aside a certain time each week to do their worrying, and at that time sit down and worry hard and get it over with, then they'd be a lot happier during the rest of the week. So a bunch of us have set aside this half hour every Monday night at 9.30 to do our worrying. For instance, there's Francis Craig, worrying with the men in his orchestra. <laughs> and there's Jane Grant, worrying with the words to her song. David Cobb, worrying with the words he's supposed to say. And a studio packed full of people with their worries. Just listen to them. <laughs> Did you hear him? The gloom was so thick we cut it with a knife. Say, Francis, while we're setting the stage for the first session, give us a tune that'll put everybody in the mood.
I here and now declare the worry hour officially in session. Members will assume the approved position. Right hand on right knee. Palm of right hand upward with chin resting heavily on the palm. Left foot slightly forward with the left hand on left knee. Now then, all together, a good old worry hour frown as I declare our purpose. To refrain from all worry throughout the week, except at this time, each Monday night when the worry hour comes. To keep careful record of any matters arising at other times during the week, so they may be worried about on the worry hour. And to report any members caught worrying at any other time. The session is now open for the first order of business. What'll we worry about? Come on now, warriors, speak up. There must be something. Uh, uh, Professor, one, one brother in the back of the room back there says he's afraid his coal pile won't last through the cold weather. Me too. My, my, if there's a coal dealer listening, rush to Studio C. It sounds like there may be a lot of customers here. Well, I reckon that's taken care of. What else? Uh, well, uh, I have a worry, Professor Fred. Don't approach the matter so lightly, Dave. Put another fur in your brow. Another fur? Uh, <clears throat> how's this? Now you got it. One more wrinkle in your forehead, and I think you had wearing a corduroy cap. <laughs> now then, what's your worry? Well, I'll tell you, Professor, it's this program. You know, we're supposed to dramatize the best letter received from a listener describing his or her worry and what he or she did about it. But since this is the very first meeting of the Worry Hour, we haven't had a chance to tell the listeners about it, and therefore we haven't received any letters yet. No wonder I'm worried. All right, go ahead and tell them about it now, so we'll have a lot of letters for next week. You mean now? Yeah. I sure. can? Oh, boy. Well, Worry Hour members, here's the idea. Each week on the Worry Hour, we'll dramatize the best letter received describing your worry and how you disposed of it. And the sender of the letter chosen as the best will receive $25 in cash. Now, uh, don't just write about your worry. The worry you write must have been solved, as most worries are, because, well, you know as well as we do that most of the things we worry about never happen. Fancy language or decorations will not help your chances to win one whit. We just want, in your own words, the story of your worst worry that never materialized. So here's your chance to win $25, the chance for worry to be really worth something. Mail your letter to the Worry Hour in care of WSM, Nashville, Tennessee. Employees of the National Life and Accident Insurance Company and their families are not eligible to participate in this contest. Well, now, we've been worrying for about, about seven and a half minutes now about all the things we wish to be and aren't. And now, while the class rests, Francis Craig plays and Snooky Landman sings Jerome Kern's lovely song, All the Things You Are. You are the promised kiss of springtime That makes the lonely winter seem long You are the breathless hush of evening That trembles on the brink of a lovely song You are the angel glow that lights a star The dearest things I know Are what you are Someday My happy arms will hold you And someday I'll know that moment divine When all the things you are $50, less 30 cents for lunch, carry forward to schedule. Uh, uh, Professor Fred, why all the worry? Oh, oh, oh well, yeah. it's this pesky income tax return. And it's got to be in by Friday. <laughs> well, uh, have you listed all your dependents? Sure. I'm taking credit for one wife, one child, two goldfish, and the finance company. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> But, Professor, you can't take credit for exemption for the finance company. They're not dependent on you. That's what you'll think. Did you ever miss a payment with one of them? 
Every time I'm late with one, I get a letter saying, you bought this car and we're depending on it to pay. But that's not what worrying me. Uh, you say that isn't what's worrying you, eh? Well, uh, then what is the cause of the mental agony? Well, I tell you. It's this part that has me stumped. It says here on this blank, a person who, during the entire year, was the head of a family is entitled to an exemption of $2,500. I see. Well, what about that? That just goes to show you how much the government knows about such things. Who ever heard of a married man being ahead of his family for a whole year at a time? <laughs> <laughs> Professor, accept the right hand of fellowship. Brother, this tax business gets more complex every year. But with your help, I got the return filled out. And now if I can just find some place to borrow the money to pay the tax... You know, Dave, here's the way it looks to me. A man has to pay Social Security taxes so he'll have an income of 65, and then they got the income tax to worry him to death before he gets there. The 3,500 S.H.I.E.L.D. men who represent the National Life and Accident Insurance Company in the field are all members of the Worry Hour, Professor Frett. That is, they are members by proxy. They don't have so many worries themselves, but they're busy every day helping other people remove their worries. There are a lot less worries in the world, you know, because of the benefits of life insurance. The shield man finds a father worrying about how to guarantee his son a college education. And the worry is removed because there's a shield plan designed to do just that. A purchaser of a new home worries about how the balance of the mortgage would be paid if anything should happen to him. And the shield man can fix that, too, with life insurance. The head of a family wants to find some guaranteed way to continue an income to his family after he's gone. The shield man can arrange family income for any amount desired and for any period of time. And so goes the day of the shield man. Other people's worries become the shield man's opportunity for more service. I see. Sure. In other words, Dave, any of the members of the worry hour who don't enjoy worrying, or those who aren't good worries anyway can see the shield man and have him arrange for them an adequate program of life insurance. And then they won't have much to worry about. There you are, warriors. All in favor, say aye. Aye! And now, Worry Hour members, here is a welcome surprise. As a guest artist on the Worry Hour, we have the pleasure of presenting the lovely Miss Kitty Callan, featured vocalist with Jack T. Garden's Orchestra. I'll tell you... <laughs> This is the way it happened. Maestro Francis Craig learned this afternoon that she was visiting in town and asked her if she'd come up to help us launch the worry hour. Well, she said if we wanted her to, and if Francis would fix up a nice arrangement for her, she would. And we did, and he did, and <laughs> she did. So here she is, Miss Kitty Callan, singing one of Irving Berlin's best and one of her favorites, Blue Skies. Blue sky, smiling at me, nothing but blue sky do I see, blue days, all of them go. Saw the sun shining so bright, never saw things going so right, noticing the days hurrying by when you're in love, my heart Thank you. 
of a business. A little worry of my own and my wife's. Oh, why, why, hello, dear. Hello. I was just going to tell them about my birthday present. Thank goodness that doesn't worry me anymore. I'll never forget that morning and the worry of me. Phineas, Phineas, wake up. It's your birthday. Oh, wake up, dear. I, I want to give you your present. Uh, birthday? Oh, oh why, why, sure, get up. It's my birthday. Woo-hoo! What big boy this floor is cold. Where are my house slippers? <laughs> Just you look around and you'll find them. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, Here they are. Say, what's this? These aren't my slippers. Oh, gee. Oh, honey, gee, these are swell. Just what I wanted. Well, your old ones were about worn out. I gave them to the janitor last night. Put them on, Phineas. I think they'll look pretty with your blue bathrobe. Yeah. Say, these are pretty. They're good leather, too. Let's see now. This is the, the left one. Well, what's the ma... Phineas, Fred, they're not too small. Well, maybe just just a little. Gosh, I can't can't get my foot in this one. Oh. <laughs> well, well, you can exchange them, darling. Just take them to town when you go. I had no idea they'd be too small. Why, if anything, I was afraid they'd be too. <laughs> but I know the men's shop will be glad to exchange them for. <laughs> Come right in, sir. What can I do for you? I want to exchange these house slippers. My wife bought them for my birthday, and they're too small. She said she got them here. I'm afraid, sir, these didn't come from here. The men's shop does not carry this type of merchandise. Oh, I see. Well, well, I'm sorry, old man. I thought sure she said this is where she got them. Well, uh, I'll call her after I get to the office and ask her. But thanks, anyway. Operator, give me 80594. Yes, please. Hello, is that you, honey? Yes, dear. Did you exchange them all right? Listen, they told me at the man's shop that these slippers didn't come from there. Was that where you said you got them? Oh, dear. Now, let me see. I got them the same place I punched a pair of suspenders for Uncle Charlie. And that was uh, at... Uh... Oh, oh, Phineas, I'm afraid I put you to a lot of trouble. Because, because it wasn't the men's shop. It was Miller Brothers. Oh, I'm so worried about making you go on that wild goose chase. That's all right, dear. I'll exchange them at Miller Brothers. Yes, sir. Come right in. I want to exchange these house uh, Exchange letters. desk, 14th floor, please. Oh. Hey, going up. Fourteen floor. We got hook, scatter, rag, broadloom, oriental rugs on this floor, folks. Want any? Uh, any exchange desk on this floor, boy? Yes, sir. But I'm supposed to steal folks away from it. Oh, you are, huh? Well, let me off. Is this the exchange desk? Yeah, too big or too little. Uh, oh, too little. There's some house slippers my wife got in my birthday present, and I want to... I'm going to have to ask you to leave sentiment out of this, buddy. Bright days don't mean nothing to us. <laughs> well, anyway, here's the slippers. Where's the sail slip, bud? Sail slip? Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry, but I haven't got Sorry, the bud, we don't exchange nothing without a sail slip. And speaking of sails, the Shield men, 3,500 of them who represent the National Life and Accident Insurance Company in the field, make sails every day to thoughtful fathers and mothers who want to make their program of protection complete. And now, back to the 14th floor of Miller Brothers. Look, I got the slippers right here. You can see them with your own eyes. I don't want to exchange the slip. I want to exchange the slippers. Let's not argue about it, bud. Anyway, I've got to go to lunch, ain't I? Craziest guy I've ever seen in my life. Can you imagine that? Oh, well, I'll have to find a stale slip when I get home tonight. <laughs> Look, 
Look here, honey. I'm tired of hunting all over town for a place to exchange these house slippers. Miller Brothers wants a sales slip. The men's shop says they didn't come from there. What do you say I just trade them to the janitor for my old ones and let him do the exchanging? Nonsense, Phineas. But it does worry me that nobody seems to think I got the slippers at their store. Now, let me see. I bought them the day Mrs. Carter took me to town, and that was on Wednesday, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Phineas, dear, does that new store on 4th Street handle men's shoes? How do I know? They do if you bought these there. Now, don't fuss at me. I looked all over town to get you the prettiest pair of house slippers I could find, and, and that's the way you appreciate it. All right, all right, I'll go barefoot. Oh! Now, 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 don't worry about it. I can't help it. When I think of all the trouble I went to to get you a pair of genuine snuggle shoes, <laughs> that's the kind they are, the best kind there is. See? It's stamped right inside the heel. <laughs> Phineas, look what it says. Genuine snuggle shoes. Goodman's bootery. That's where I got them. Goodman's bootery. <laughs> Well, that's the way it goes. Well, now, here's a familiar voice to WSM listeners. Jane Grant comes to the microphone to do her bit towards chasing worries out the window. Uh, as a matter of fact, she's been a little worried herself. She told me she dreamt about me last night. Think of that. She dreamt that Clark Gable and I were fighting over her. And when I asked her who won, you know what she said? She said, uh, you did. Darn that dream. <laughs> Darn that dream, I dream each night You say you love me and you hold me tight But when I awake, you're out of sight Oh, darn that dream Darn your lips and darn your eyes They lift me high above the moonlit sky Then I tumble out of paradise Oh, darn that dream Darn that one-track mind of mine It can't understand that you don't care Just to change the mood I'm in I'd welcome a nice old nightmare Darn that dream and bless it too Without that dream I never would have you but it haunts me and it won't come true So darn that dream mind of mine it can't understand that you don't care just to change this mood I'm in I'd welcome a nice old nightmare darn that dream and bless it too without that dream I never would have you but it haunts me and it won't come true so darn that dream. And now Professor Phineas Frett comes back to the microphone with a last word. Here's just a serious thought for the worry hour. It's a quotation, and I'm sorry we don't know its source. It goes something like this. Why worry over it? 
Just make up your mind to do better when you get another chance. And this chance is coming if you live. Just thank your lucky star for the lesson. And now, listeners, won't you take your pen in hand and write us a letter describing your worst worry and the way you waved it goodbye. For the best letter received each week, we'll arrange a dramatization and pay $25 in cash. Just write the facts, we'll add the fancy work of dialogue. Oh, yes, and here's something of interest to our Worry Hour listeners. We've prepared a little booklet called Helpful Hints on How to Worry, which we will be only too glad to send to all of those who request it. Now, in this little booklet, we tell you all about the art of worrying, and we even go so far as to suggest some stock subjects to worry about in case you have no worries of your own. So, write tonight, before you forget it, to the Worry Hour in care of WSM for your copy of Helpful Hints on How to Worry. And there's the theme, reminding us that the worry hour is over and that we must postpone all leftover worries until next Monday night at 9.30, when the worry hour will come again with Professor Phineas Frett presiding and Francis Craig furnishing the music. Our thanks to lovely Kitty Callan, featured vocalist with Jack Teagarden and his famous orchestra, for helping us in our first worry hour program. And we've invited her to be with us again next week. The same invitation goes to any of our listeners who would like to join Miss Callan as our guests next Monday. You're all invited to visit our studios and watch the program in person next week at this same time. The Worry Hour is sponsored by the National Life and Accident Insurance Company and its shield men from coast to coast. And they can save you a lot of worry by helping you make safe plans for the future with life insurance. Good night, and don't worry. <laughs> All right. Well, good night, Professor Fred. Your announcer is David Cobb, and this is the Air Castle of the South. WSM, the National Life and Accident Insurance Company, Nashville, Tennessee.